Wednesday, the 6th of September, 2017. And this is our first Ask TCW podcast of the 2017-18 season. And we're live. Hello, good evening and welcome. As I have uh, just uh, stated, this is our first Ask TCW of this new season. Uh, If you want to get in touch with us while we are broadcasting, uh, we we will definitely try and and find the time to fit you in because we have had an absolute list, as long as your arm, uh, of questions tonight. So uh, we have an absolutely packed uh, show um, so we're, we're, we're all, I hope everybody's been doing their vocal exercises um, on our panel <laughs> la, 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 la. Lovely, <laughs> it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Uh, well, yeah, as, as, you can, as you've just heard, <laughs> around our virtual campfire tonight is John O'Bullard. Good evening. Adam Reddish. Hello, everybody. Antoine Marijan. Good evening. And Andy Haywood. Evening. Right then, chaps, uh, we are going to kick off with, um, uh, well, the, f- the first question we're going to ask, I want to get it out of the way. Um, it's, it's probably going to be quite a, a quick a quick one for us to ask, but I want to get it out of the way because there is a word in it which I'm definitely probably going to pronounce wrong. I, I know what it means, um, but I, it also, I also think I'm going to sound like some kind of cartoon, um, you know, baddie when I say it. <laughs> it's just one, it's one of those last you expect a, a, a cartoon villain to say, so. Um, this question has come from Will Hodges. Um, I'll come to all of you, uh, and we'll uh, we'll just have a, a bit of a quick straw poll. Um, and he says, uh, "Remember the brouhaha about the team not being all in on day one of uh, training camp? Anyone bothered about that right now?" <laughs> Adam, go on. You uh, me <laughs> just kick uh, us off. Yeah, I, I, I seem to recall expressing a little bit of anxiety about the players not being around for the start of training camp, but. You know, the results being the results that we've had in the, the CHL, um, I probably class myself in that. Can't can't really be too concerned or too upset camp now. And? I think I'm more bothered about when uh, we're getting a breeze bar back from injury. Yes, uh, I think that's a, a, a possible cause for concern, perhaps. He, he so, did seem to play quite well initially. So, in short, no. <laughs> Andy? Um well, I I wasn't overly bothered regarding the sort of the, the later players in the sense that <clears throat> I kind of said that as long as they were in before the competitive games, I, I wasn't overly bothered. Um, so it, it didn't it, it it didn't really affect me then. So I'm relatively happy with it, I suppose. Jono, I. I was a bit bothered because obviously Neil Black had promised that everybody would be in for the 7th of August and so at the time I probably was a little bit perturbed. Now, who cares? Frankly, really, who cares after <laughs> after the last few weeks? Uh, all forgotten. Yes, I, I would say so. I mean, I think a couple of the players that that we, we have been waiting on, I suppose, if you can term it like that, I, I think they've actually... You know, been worth the wait. Um, you know, Jan Sove springs to mind straight away. I think, uh, yeah, de- definitely worth the wait uh, for him. Uh, and for me personally, I didn't believe it was going to happen anyway. So the fact that he didn't, it was just kind of, yeah, okay, fine, just you know, move on. But yes, I think uh, results uh, since that point have uh, sort of justified the the coach's decision uh, as he. Uh, said in a Nottingham Post article uh, to wait for the right guy and sort of go against the uh, the gaffer's wishes as it were and the gaffer's promise so yeah I think uh, <laughs> so, sort of straw poll around the uh, around the team right now uh, around us on the cat's whisk because I no <laughs> I think no is the answer um so we'll uh, just uh, results aside, you know, we, we, we're sort of still, I think we're still sort of reeling a little bit from 
Champions Hockey League action and uh, we do have a, a bulk of questions that uh, do have a Champions Hockey League um, theme around them so uh, we'll plough through them first of all I think so first of all we have a question from John Casey on the cage and he says would you be disappointed if the Panthers didn't qualify for the second round of the CHL based on the current table and kick us off with that <laughs> uh, well We've put ourselves in a really good position. Uh, you know, the destiny, destiny is in our own hands, so to speak. Um, I think based on the teams that we've beaten, then yes, I would be disappointed. Um, however, we've had a fantastic campaign um, so far this year and um, it long it w- will it live in the memory. So um, I'd, I'd ask us again when... Um, when we've probably been stuffed nine nil in both games, um, <laughs> knowing, knowing how things go in, um, and I'll let you know. Um, I'll sit on the I'll sit on the fence for now. Andy, um, probably initially yes, but I think in the long run, when you look back at it, what we've achieved already, um, we, we've already completely, um, you know, surpassed expectations. So I think it, the initial sort of um, you know, say we lose at home, and then we, you know, the week after, if we lose in uh, in Finland, I imagine you know that the rest of that week you'd probably feel pretty miffed. But I think realistically, once we sort of get into the swing of the league season, and, and once we look back on this year, um, you know, in the, in the future seasons to come, I think we'll look back incredibly fondly, um, and we'll realise just quite how incredible. Um, what we've already done is so it's sort of it's a bit of both in that sense so it's it's a yes because of the position that we're in at the moment but I think eventually that will die down and you and, and it will just be a case of you know what we've we've surpassed every expectation going um, that was fantastic Jono anything to add to that um well I'd be disappointed yes because We've got ourselves into the position to qualify, so if we don't, yeah, I'll be disappointed, but I certainly won't be disappointed with the players or the club because we never expected to be in this position. Uh, we're top of, top of the group after four games. I mean, that's that's phenomenal. It's, it's, it's incredible. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, I'll be disappointed if, if we don't qualify because of the position we're, we're in. But, yeah, I think... We do have a very tough task. We're facing the ninth seeds in the competition. They're a very, very good side. The Finnish league is vastly superior to the elite league. They're going to be on a budget vastly superior to ours. So it it shouldn't be a surprise if they do win both games. However, because of the position that we're in, it would be disappointing if we didn't qualify from my own personal point of view. Right, yeah, thank you very much for your question then, John. And uh, we will, again, move on to a, another CAHL-themed question. Uh, Adam, I will put this one to you first to put your teeth in, get your teeth into. But uh, uh, Matthew Stevens, who is a Guildford fan, uh, has asked, is beating Burn and Mountfield the greatest achievement by a British ice hockey team? Um, I would probably say yes. I think it would be. Um, I mean, we've put British ice hockey firmly on the map now. I think that... There's probably always a bit of um, a thought that British ice hockey was a, you know, a second tier hockey nation, um, certainly in Europe anyway. And, you know, the exploits of Panthers and, you know, to a lesser degree Cardiff, I think of, you know, maybe forced a few people from, you know, much high profile leagues to sit up and take notice of uh, what teams in the elite league can do. And, you know, that can only be a good thing for the profile of the league and it can only be good for ice hockey in this country. Um, so yeah, I do think it's probably the, the, the greatest achievement in British ice hockey. Um, it's certainly uncharted waters for us. And, you know, should we be, you know, Turku in one of the two games and, you know, statistically get through and, and make sure that we qualify, then that really would be incredible. And I think that would send absolutely ginormous shockwaves through possibly not even just European hockey, but maybe hockey on a global stage as well. Andy, um, I don't think you've uh, I don't think you've got the opportunity to put sort of that point across because you weren't with us uh, at Bunker sort of straight afterwards, and I think we did we did 
probably I think we discussed it on Monday as well. But uh, yeah, gr- greatest achievement by a British hockey team. Um, do you, do you agree with, with Adam, or have you got a slightly different view on that? Um, no, I I I I think I fully agree. Um, ultimately, I, you know, I've I've not got a list of great British ice hockey, uh, you know, club achievements, as it were. Um, but I'd certainly, from from a sort of limited knowledge point of view, I'd certainly put it up there with the um, the Olympic win. Um, uh, when was it thirty six? Yeah, I'd certainly put it in that kind of category, maybe. Um, but as far as club competition and 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 club games go, um, I think it probably is. I, I imagine that there has been perhaps some pre-season games against some very good teams where, um, you know, elite league clubs or or British clubs have won, but they would be sort of exhibition games um, rather than, you know, what's at stake in, in the Champions Hockey League. Um, I, I, I'm not sure about my first season was, I think, like the last season of the Ahern Cup. Um, so I don't know if there was any sort of prestige in that. Um you know, and if and if we, you know, competed and, and won any games in there, but certainly in in the elite league era, um, I can't think of a result really that is is better. Um, I I'm just going to jump about a little bit. Um, I, I, I had I had an order for my questions, and already it's, I'm chucking it out the window. Um, but we have had a question that has is sent that that's been sent to us on on Twitter. If you want to get in touch, uh, by the way, I neglected to mention earlier. Best way through Twitter at Cats Whiskers TV. Uh, Max Artis has been in touch, and um, Max has asked a similar question to a couple of others that we've already had in. So I'm I'm going to sort of lump them all together, and we'll we'll sort of you know we'll we'll, we'll get into them uh, when when I've sort of got everybody's kind of um, angle out there on them. Uh, sorry, so we'll start t- with Tina. Angus Wilson. Go on, sorry. Sorry, can I just can I just go on that burn and mount for your question, please? Very, very quick. Oh absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, sorry Max, you're gonna have to wait. Because yeah, I, I I personally as good an achievement as it is, I still think winning the Continental Cup was a greater achievement last season. For the simple reason that we had to go to three places away from home. We won eight games out of nine and I think that Becoming the first team to win that was actually a greater achievement. As good as these are and as fantastic as winning mm. these games against top-class teams, they're one-off games. Uh, and I think you can say the same Cardiff against Davos, which was another fantastic result on Sunday. They're, they're one-off games. And I, st- I just think that the Continental Cup was probably a greater achievement overall. Okay, right. So um, I'll get back to uh, the, the the bulk of questions. Um, we, we've sort of been been having a, a discussion uh, around this. Um, there's there's a fair bit of speculation uh, about various players, uh, you know, potential player movements, potential short contracts, and such. Uh, so I'll, I'll sort of just dive into the questions, and we'll we'll, we'll you know we'll sort of take each angle that, that uh, we think is, is necessary, if you will. Uh, so I'll start with Angus Wilson. He's uh, sent us this question in, um, and he says, is, it has been mentioned that a few new Panthers may be on short three-month contracts. Is this true? Now, the, the one thing I'll, I'll, stop, I'll stop at that point just for the moment to say we don't know. Uh, we don't have any in, you know, knowledge of the inner workings of the club, so that's not, not something we can definitively answer. Uh, but just to continue with the question, if so, who? I can take an educated guess o- at one or two. And it, to be honest, if if we you know if we do that, then there will it will be just guesses from from our part as well. If they go, what are the chances of replacing them with players good enough for our silverware push this season? Uh, could they stay if they are leaving? I also appreciate the ifs and buts of it all, that and that the season hasn't started yet. I just would have thought that if we signed someone, we would do it for a minimum of a year. Uh, I, I think you probably mean the season, Angus, but I see, I see where you're coming from. Um, Sam Baum has also asked the question, which three players do you think are on three-month deals? 
um, and all related into sort of what Max has tweeted into us uh, tonight. And it says, uh, who leaves us after the CHL run? Some players not released on sponsorship. Uh, I think we've sort of had a, that w- w- one of us has got a match program uh, somewhere. Um, I'm not sure if we've managed to read anything into any uh, any of that lot. So, um, Ant, kick us off. <laughs> oh, cheers. I'm still trying to do the investigation. Any player I'm, I'm, I'm down to the last five players on the Pampers website roster and the only one that hasn't got a sponsor so far is um, oh, I've forgotten his bloody name already it's Joe Hazeldine who is a young Brit yeah. who was predominantly here to train with us um, da, 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 come back to me in five minutes or after well, well, one, thing, one thing I will just say before I do move on to anybody I did see I, did, I didn't read it but I did see something on social media today uh, that said that there were some player sponsorship packages still going so I don't know if it's may, maybe just to answer the part of Max's question uh, maybe it's not that some sponsorship package haven't, packages haven't been released it could be that some haven't been filled yet so that's oh. just something that, that's just something something to consider as well so Anybody sort of ready to jump in on this? Yeah, one at I'm, all? I'm ready now. I'm go ready. Go on, now. go on. I've given um, you enough of a distraction. <laughs> hit, hit us with um, it. Let's I didn't do it. bother. I didn't bother with the mainstay Brits, so I didn't look at, to see if there was packages for them. I just no. noticed that Hazeldine hasn't got a package. Everybody yep. else has. Right. Okay. So, in some and fashion or form, the, we, we we do seem to have. That's on the gold. Okay. Um, and I mean, the, the, the gold sponsorship, um, it, 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 essentially what you what you get out of that, I think there's, there's a couple of training sessions and there's a dedicated sponsors, skate with the players and you get the you get a game-worn jersey at the end of the season. So um, you would think that players staying, players will be staying for the whole season. Otherwise, yeah, the, the, giving them a jersey might be a little bit awkward after the you know, three months after they've left. Anyhow, um <laughs> <laughs> doesn't the sponsorship uh, normally transfer to their person's replacement well if that pl- said player does leave yeah usually yeah i know and i mean i suppose that that i mean that depends on on re- you know replacement being lined up which i suppose goes back to you know angus's uh part of angus's question uh you know the, what are the chances of replacing them with players good enough so <laughs> who wants to come in and start with something around all of those questions now we've sort of answered the sponsorship angle of it well the the sort of the big sort of rumor um is that sorbet is is one of them um but again ultimately i I genuinely have no idea um but obviously the, the talk is that you know the the signing of that kind of magnitude that we that we made the fact that he was in so quickly um there was talk of it before he even uh, stepped foot on the ice as to whether he was perhaps only on a three month uh, visa um but you know who knows there's nothing to say that they're on um like a three month visa and a three month contract um with the scope of them getting a, a permanent one i you know i genuinely don't know uh, and i don't think realistically anyone does um at, at the moment um is it something we should know I, I i don't know to be honest i don't know whether well i don't know whether it's something we should know but i think if it, if it's somebody for for example just because you you've mentioned his name survey so um if it was somebody you know of of that that caliber. I mean, to be quite honest, I I think I I like I like the guy. I think he's a really good player. I I'd be quite disappointed if he was going. So you know, maybe maybe some some notice would kind of soften the blow, perhaps just just to put that one out there. Well, maybe. I mean, if I'm just to throw my opinion into it, I would imagine that if there is any truth to the rumours of uh, some players being on three month uh, visas and short term contracts. I'd imagine that they would probably be players that have signed, you know, relatively close to the start of the the Champions Hockey League season, because you know if you're if you're signing at the start of the summer, uh, well, not long after the the last hockey season's finished and wrapped up, I'd imagine that you'd probably want the security of knowing that you're going to spend the entirety of the the season ahead, you know, at one club. Whereas you know if you're a quality player that's on the, the sort of market as Sauvé was then, you know, Sauvé might not want to commit himself to the Panthers for a whole season. He might just want to have a look at the organisation and see whether it's to his liking. 
because he might have doubts or he might have had doubts before he committed to signing for us, whether, you know, he, he might be a little bit too good for our league. Now, I mean, he is a quality player and, you know, like you, Tina, I, I really rate him, but he might have had a few doubts and he just wants to, you know, have a look at the league, you know, get a feel for the place. And if he feels comfortable in a few weeks' time, then, you know, it, it may all be a case that he says to the, the management of the club, I want to stay here for the rest of the season because this place is absolutely fantastic. And I'm just thinking who else signed late. Polini signed quite late, didn't he? Um, he was fairly late. Uh, into yeah, but Pellini, Pellini, Pellini's British, so he wouldn't, Brit- he wouldn't have needed a, oh, a visa. Of course, of mm. course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, going back to my original point, those late signings, I would imagine, realistically, are the ones that you know might well be on short-term contracts. But you know, as Andy said, we don't know. You know, it's all it's all conjecture at this moment, and uh, you know, fans are talking about it. And, you know, nobody knows the, the truth of the matter. So, you know, we'll just have to see what happens in time. Um, and But hopefully, you know, we can keep the well, all of our roster together because if, you know, they give us anything like what they've shown so far through the Champions Hockey League um, campaign, albeit it's only four of the six group games, then, you know, I think we're going to have a, a very, very good season ahead of us. Um. Yeah, so <laughs> quite quite a lot to sort of touch on there, um, and I think uh, and you're probably you're still having a, a, a bit of a, a, a private detective look through the uh, through the program, aren't you? <laughs> so, uh, I've we'll done that. I've had yeah, some yeah, sponsors. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll 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 leave you to your musings. Um, I, I'm, I'm probably going to jump around a little bit uh, and and just sort of dig in a question that that kind of kind of relates. Uh, to 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 all of that, and it's maybe sort of moving away from the, the starting to move away from the CHL questions. But do you think that we'll see any more players arriving after the initial good start in the CHL? That comes from Scott Hill, and I suppose that, that kind of comes with a caveat of, you know, if there are players who are on three month deals, then we probably should already be looking. Um, uh, Jono, uh, give, give give us your thoughts on that question. Um. I, I would think we would always be looking for players, but can I see anyone coming in? I suppose it depends on the old Zarchenko Zar- situation. Um, I very much doubt we'll see him here. So will we be looking for a second import netminder? Probably so. I think if the, if that is the case, we will only see an import netminder come in. Um, I can't see anybody else coming in once the uh, Champions Hockey League is over, unless somebody leaves. Andy, would you agree with that? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, the only other thing is, you know, when we inevitably have a team decimated by injuries, because <laughs> we always do. Well, that's the thing, isn't it, these um, days? But yeah, no, I, I, I agree with Jono. I don't think I don't think Corey and, um, and his staff sort of ever stop really looking to make the team better. Um, but what we have at the moment, if they stay fit, if they keep playing like they are, I don't think we, we particularly need anyone else. Um, but obviously, it's a it's a long season. Um, and, you know, like I say... You run into a couple of uh, couple of injuries, and, and and who knows? But I would imagine at the moment, I think we're probably relatively happy with where we are. Okay. Um, well, can I just jump in there, Tina? Absolutely. Yeah. And Please say do. that you know our sort of exploits in the Champions Hockey League may well help us, you know, with recruitment because you know I don't want anybody to leave from the current roster because they're all doing fantastically well. But you know, should. Sorve go or Shala get snapped up by a bigger team. You know, what we've done in the competition so far, I'd imagine that players and their agents would be thinking, ooh, you know, maybe Britain's not too bad a place for, to go and, you know, play the remainder of the season. So I think that from what we've done so far, if the worst was to happen and we were to lose a few players, I would hope that we would be, you know, looking at some fairly decent calibre replacements to come in. 
And just sort of on on that kind of point, there is another question that's coming from Phil Doherty. And he says, do you think that there is a risk that any of the team may quit to take up a better paid role in Europe? If so, out of the current squad, who is the most likely? And what impact do you think this may have on our league campaign? Ant, jump in on that one, please. Uh, It's always likely. Um, We're not in a position where we can say to a player... No, you've got to stay. If somebody, if a bigger team, a bigger league comes comes in calling for him, um, I think depending what happens with with the CHL, that could give us a, a character to stick at him. If we manage to get out of the group, um, an extra incentive to stay. Um, again, depending how we're doing in the league as well. But I mean, we've we've had it happen in the past. It's it's bound to happen again in the future. Um, but I hope, based on the start we've had this season, that it doesn't. Jono, anything to add to that? Um, well, the thing is that the, to, to split Phil's question into two parts, what impact do you think this may have on our league campaign? Well, we can't really answer that one unless it happens. Obviously, it depends if it happens and who goes. If someone like, say, Jan Sove went and and, uh, and Shala went, it will probably have a pretty, pretty large impact, certainly for the short term, until we got replacements in. But on, on the other side of the question is, I have no doubt that when the Panthers were recruiting, they would have used the CHL as a recruitment tool. tool. Look, this is a, it's a huge Europe-wide competition. You're putting yourself in the shop window. And the form we've shown and the fact we're top of our league, you're going to get a lot more people looking at us. So we probably being very well scouted at this point in time because we shocked a lot of people by getting where we are and who knows there, there, there may be some offers coming in for some of our, our better players so there's certainly a risk that the team may quit to take up better paid roles because they, they have put themselves in the shop window over the over the past week or so uh, out of the current squad, squad who is most likely well I suppose you've got to look at the likes of, of Sove Shala um Possibly even Mok Shantev, who, who has been absolutely outstanding in this CHL campaign. So, mm. so we will, so we will see. I, I think it's a, it's a wait and see question. I really hope not, because I think, like most Panthers fans, I've been incredibly excited to sit, to see what this team has done, and I really, really cannot wait for the weekend. Um, we've had uh, another tweet in, so uh, I want to ask this one before we uh, move on and, and before I forget, because, uh, you know, that's a thing too. Uh, so this is coming from Chris G.L. Lavelle, and I believe, uh, Chris, you are a Giants fan. I apologise if I'm doing you a disservice there. Um, and he says, is there a worry if you continue to do well in the CHL, you may struggle domestically like last year last year, um, and uh, the Continent, uh, sorry, the Challenge Cup? Uh, and I mean, you know, came out with the Continental Cup, but uh, it, it did seem to affect the uh, the domestic season. So, uh, Andy, do you want to answer that one? Um, well, ultimately, there's always that chance. Um, but <clears throat> the team that we have signed this season is so much different to what we had last year that on, on face value from what we've seen, I, I don't think they themselves would, would let it happen. That doesn't necessarily... I'm not saying that we're going to walk the league. Um, I've said in Monday's podcast that Sheffield will win that. Um, it's it's not that I'm saying that they will... You know, we won't lose a game. We absolutely will lose games in the season. Um, but I don't think that the, 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 the type of players that we've got... Um, and I think that the, the age of the players and the... And the sort of um, you know the whole young and hungry sort of vibe that was that was signed. Um, I don't think they would have kind of let what happened last season happen happen this year. Um, you know, I'm I'm sure. You know, despite the fact that a, a lot of the time it didn't look like it, I'm sure deep down that the majority of the players last season probably did. You know, um, care and and did. Um, you know, feel like they they massively underachieved back here, um, but you know, of the grand scheme of things, they they didn't really do anything to sort of put it right. They they never looked like 
we never had that sort of team that was going to say, you know what, this isn't good enough, and then they'd, they'd, you know, they'd grab a game by the scruff of the neck and they'd, they'd make a difference. Whereas we've seen already, you know, particularly in that burn game, that you know we will hop on about forever. Don't don't get me wrong, because it was fantastic. Um, you know, we were two goals down in that game. There is no way on earth that last season's team would be 2-0 down to burn and come back and win. Um, so I just think the makeup of the team and the style of play um, and, the, and the type of player that we've got, I don't think we will be anywhere near as bad as we were last season domestically. Like I say, that doesn't mean that I'm endorsing us for silverware, but I think we will have a, a, a far better uh, season than last year. Ant, do you want to uh, quickly come in on that one? Uh, no, I think I've about covered everything I wanted to say. Jolly good, right? Okay, uh, we will move on with a, a very, a very quick uh, question. I don't think it needs a lot of uh, a lot of discussion, uh, but it, it, it's it's more of a you know let, let's let's get a, get our opinions within the team, and also if anybody wants to uh, agree or disagree with the team on this uh, this particular question, then please feel free or you know put your opinions in. Um, but Lee Constable has asked, which goal did you think was best? Mokshan says equalising beauty or Brown's game-winning belter. I can't work it out myself. Both awesome goals in their own respect. Uh, Adam. Mokshan says for me, I think it's because it was a tic-tac-toe play. It just looked really, really pretty. Um, you know, great, quick interchange of passes. I mean, Brown's goal was pretty stunning itself, but you've got to say he was afforded quite a lot of space as he skated through the neutral zone and he got a clear shooting lane there to look at so I don't want to devalue Brown's goal because you know game winning goal and and it was great in its own right but I just thought that the actual play that led up to Mokshansev's goal was absolutely stunning Jono I would agree with that because as I said on Monday's podcast I thought Mokshansev's goal was um, it was NHL quality. It was beautiful, and, and the pass from from Phillips was just sublime. Brown's goal was great, uh, taking it coast to coast and smashing it into the net. Brilliant. But we but we do see that quite often, whereas we very rarely see a goal of the quality of Mark Shantev. So yeah, definitely Mark Shantev for me. And uh, yeah, it's mo- the mocks for me. Um, it had everything. It had the battle on the boards, um, a couple of lovely flick passes and, and, and movement. Um, it was sublime, absolutely sublime. And don't get me wrong, I mean, Browns, especially at the time, it, it flew in. It was a hell of a snipe. Um, although um, Paul Lady and uh, Ari Murphy weren't as chuffed with it, they were basically saying that it was a fluky shot and the keeper should have done better but uh, that's their that's their opinion my opinion was it was a hell of a goal but just the mocks was just oh yeah, it was brilliant <laughs> Andy are we going to get a unanimous decision across the panel uh, yeah because I actually agree with Paul Aidy and Aaron Murphy in yeah. the sense that th- there's 100% their netminder will want that goal back but 100% there was nothing that netminder could do about Mark Shantos' goal because it was so good. Um, and, and you know, I don't think... I mean, realistically, uh, and again, it's not... A goal's a goal. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, if it was... Was it Tim Billingsley's goal um, against Mountfield where it was just sort of poked in? It doesn't matter mm-hmm. if it goes in like that or if it or if it's some sort of magical uh, play. It, it's a goal. But I, I don't think Jeff Browns, in my opinion, would make the top five in what we've seen this season. Seems reasonable, yeah. Um, I, I can't disagree with anything anybody said. Yeah, the uh, like has already been said. Jeff Brown's goal, you know, it was it, it was the game winner. It was it came out. It, it seemed to come out of nowhere, as far as, as far as I thought, you know. And I, I didn't. I, I thought with, you know, I thought that was going to get saved, and it and it didn't, and it was amazing. But you 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 watch. I could watch that Mark Shantab goal all day. Uh, on repeat because it was beautiful. Uh, so I yeah, think the there's... timing of Jeff Brown's goal as well because it was so yes. close after the start of the period. It was very much sort of catching him cold foot. Mm. Yeah, Which, again, it, it's not a bad thing. No, absolutely not. <laughs> a, a Panthers goal is still a Panthers goal, however it is scored. Um, so we will move on with uh, our next question. Um, 
another one that, that, that sort of it's, we're starting to move away from the CHL now, but I will uh, we, we'll ask this one because it mentions it, uh, and this is from Jamie Hucknall Magpie. Uh, I, th- I think you're probably giving away a lot of allegiances there, Jamie, uh, and he says with the fantastic performances in the CHL against teams who play their own game, can we adapt against the rough and disruptive teams? Also, can we break down teams who effectively park the bus? Jono. Play like we did on Saturday against teams in the Elite League and we'll break anybody down. Um, Other teams in the Elite League wouldn't be able to live with that performance from Saturday. However, are we going to produce that performance every game? I I would think it'd be doubtful. It'd be almost impossible to keep keep that up. Um, But I, I am incredibly optimistic about how we will fare this season. I predicted us to win the league on Monday. I haven't changed my mind. Um, I think we... Rough and disruptive teams. Well, I think we've shown that we can play against anybody who tries to to bring it to us. We've got players like Gagnon who will fight anybody. Jeff Brown will drop the mitts if, if possible. We look like a team who will play for each other. Um, I, I know the term isn't well liked, but we certainly seem to have a lot of team toughness. Uh, and I, I don't think coming up against rough and disruptive teams will be a problem at all. Also, teams who, who part the bus. We score goals like the one that Mokshantev scored. No no defence is going to be able to do anything about that or netminder. So I, I haven't got any worries whatsoever that we won't be able to break down teams in the Elite League. Uh, rather than coming to anybody specific, because I think Jono's covered that quite well, uh, anybody else want to add to that or have an opposing point of, uh, point of view they want to put across? I mean, I've mentioned it in the past that we actually do look like a much bigger team this year, just in, in stature alone, than we did last year in particular. Um, and so when it comes to rough and tumble type of things, yeah, it's not always it's not all about fighting. It's about who can just stand there and take a hit and give a hit. And I think we've got plenty of that. Um, and yeah, Jono John covered everything else for me. And okay. faster as well, Ant. Yes, yes, we are much faster. We are much quicker. You know, we move the puck quicker. Our players can skate quicker. So I think, you know, we're we're quite three-dimensional, aren't we, as a team? We, you know, we've got players, like Jono said, that can contribute in different assets and you know, bring different things to the party. So, you know, I'm sure that, we'll have to win games in different ways over the course of the season because, you know, some teams might want to try and outgun us offensively. Good luck to them. Other teams might want to park the bus, as you say. So, you know, a good side will have to find different ways to, to win hockey games. And I, I, the only thing I, I would want to say in relation to all of that um, is that mm. I, and it was something I commented on, uh, on the night. Uh, and, and this may not be a problem when we're up against elite league teams but against burn i noticed how pedestrian our power play was theirs was absolutely fantastic we you know we we, we did well against their special teams i think um but you know again that that was you know it wasn't really a comparable standard but but it was it was just an observation i made on the night so you know we, we the fact that we scored some power play goals is encouraging <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. And I, and I, you know, I'm, I'm happy to take that into the elite league season and see where it takes us personally. Um, right. Uh, we'll, we'll, what I will, I think I'll, uh, yeah, I think we'll come to a, another Twitter question. Um, thank you very much uh, for communicating with us. Uh, please continue to do so. As I say, we will try our very best to fit everything in. And um, this comes from Deso Dark. And he says, talking about people leaving, the biggest risk is surely surely Corey Nielsen on a shoestring budget has shocked top teams. Um, Anybody want to jump in on that one? Yeah, I'll I'll go on that one. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a fair point. Um, You know, uh, time, time and time again, we're always, you know, looked upon as as a whole, the the league as a whole, as um, you know, being you know, vastly inferior to all the other leagues um, that take part in these type of tournaments. Um, and, and let's face it, we weren't expected to win the Continental Cup. Um, we certainly weren't expected to win probably any games in, in the Champions Hockey League this season. Um, 
We certainly weren't expected to beat Hamburg in our first CHO campaign. And I just think that he, he is, you know, added to the, the rest of the sort of silverware domestically, he's he's made uh, an incredibly strong CV for himself. Um, should should an offer come in? And, and I think now more than... Um, Sort of more than any other time is is perhaps uh, you know it, it is risky for for him to be to be going. You know I think uh, both of his lads now are, are back in Canada um, playing hockey, so there's nothing other than his eleven seasons previous. There's 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 nothing really tying him down um, to, to Nottingham. Um, so I think you know now more than ever it, it is a it is a risk that you know someone with a bigger budget, um, with a, a better league to play in, um, you know, there's there's every chance that you know he could be one of the one of the top coops, um, you know, along with someone like a a, 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 a Jan Sorve or a, or a Josh Allen. Hmm. Anybody else? Well, I mean, what I'd say about that? that is that yeah, I mean, Andy has made some really good points there about. Um, you know, opportunities that might open up for Nielsen on the continent at some of the bigger clubs. But, you know, I suppose if, if he was ever faced with that situation, he'd have to ask himself, you know, and, and almost look at the trade-off. Yes, you know, it'd be exciting to go to a, a team with a bigger budget that play out of a bigger stadium, you know, in a higher profile league. But, you know, when you go to the higher profile teams, I guess the, the tolerance towards, you know, a few defeats is, you know, a lot smaller than the tolerance that you might get to a poor season here. You know, because obviously he's had all of his seasons and all of his years in Nottingham and, and that buys him time. But, you know, if you lose five games on the spin, say for Burn or, you know, any other, you know, top elite uh, European club, then you could be out on your ear. You know, he could be sacked. So he might have, you know, given up the chance to stay in Nottingham for a few more seasons and, and do things um, to go and, you know, chase the dream, as it were and come on stuck almost at the first hurdle. So, you know, it's a big dilemma for him if he was ever, you know, offered a, a really, really good contract to go and coach a, a much bigger club on, on the face of it than the Nottingham Panthers. Just on, on a related note, and feel free to uh, correct me on this, chaps, because I think this sort of goes back to towards the beginning of my hockey-watching years. Um, I seem to recall that it, and it may have been Bruce Richardson who would have stayed, he sort of hinted that he would have stayed at the clan a little bit longer had, um, you know, the North American hockey program mm-hmm. actually had any kind of recognition of um, of, of the, the, the British, uh, you know, hockey coaching uh, standard. But, but it, it sort of, I, I seem to recall he, he left because uh, he, he wanted to, to sort of work his way up and he had to sort of start at the bottom, co- coaching junior and working his way up that way. Otherwise, you know, he, he wouldn't, he would never have got anywhere. Does, does anybody remember that any differently at all? It rings a bell, but I, I can't remember the exact details. Yeah, no, I mean that's it. it, it as I say, just just a, it, just as kind of related note, um, I, it, sort of, I suppose. I'm, I'm, it, it, it's just something to throw in there as well. You know, I mean. You know, if if it, I suppose it's it sort of speaks to where you know where Corey Nielsen sees it, you know his career going and where the ambition is. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure we've talked about that before uh, many times. But yeah, it's just 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 something I wanted to you know air out loud. Um, so I'll we'll we'll, we'll sort of uh, we'll we'll leave that where it, where it is, and. Uh, we're sort of starting to move away uh, from, we've moved away from the CHL. Uh, we've got a couple of Panthers related questions and a couple of uh, sort of general more league uh, question discussions. So uh, we'll, we'll stick with the Panthers for now and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go to a question from the cage uh, from Pies. And he says, Chris Lawrence has been signed by the stars to be their go-to guy and a leader in their locker room, according to Omar Pasha. Is this a smart move? I think Lawrence is a good player when he wants to be, but he isn't consistent in that. Adam. Oh, <laughs> why did I know that you were going to come to me first on that one? Because um, I'm evil. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he has showed that he's got talent, you know, and, and you get the odd 
flash of brilliance from him. And yes, he can turn a game around, you know, in a, a moment of brilliance. But we just didn't see it often enough, in my opinion, at the Panthers. Um, I thought that he might have just been unlucky that he played on rosters that um, didn't really complement his style, or he might not have been you know, paired with forwards that, you know, complement him too much. But I think that he did a lot on his own agenda. You know, a lot of it was about Chris Lawrence. He had his own sort of agenda that he was working to. Um, I think it's quite well documented that he enjoyed, how can I put it, the social side of what comes with a an ice hockey okay. professional career. Um, so, you know, if, if that sort of thing is what Omar Pasha is trying to create in Dundee, you know, if he wants somebody that will <laughs> maybe be good for team morale and, you know, be one of the lads, then great. But, you know, I think that if a roster has, you know, got a remit to go out and win a trophy or a league or a championship or whatever, maybe, you know, too many people like Lawrence um, could, you know, disrupt the, the balance of things a little bit and, um, you know, cause the, the, the chemistry of the, the roster to you know, be a bit, bit out of kilter. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, as I said at the start, he, there are flashes of brilliance from him. He, he did have his moments. But, um, you know, on a, a low-budget side like Dundee's, which I assume they are because, you know, I think they brought a few college kids over from North America, he will probably be a leader. But, you know, is he the right sort of person to be that leader? Um, some might question and query that sort of role for, for you know, Chris Lawrence on a team. Andy, anything you want to put forward on that point? <clears throat> um, well, I, I think ultimately Adam's put it, in, you know, incredibly uh, eloquently and and sort of uh, in a very well sort of non liableless way. <laughs> 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 um, I think, you know, if if Omar Pasha um, has, has said that he, he's going to be a, a leader, I would be concerned to be a Dundee fan let's put it that way um, I, I've no doubt that he will be <clears throat> the go-to guy thing I, I, I get, I, I don't have an issue with that because I think he will do I think he will do relatively well in Dundee I think he will suit that type of play um, he, you know, he will put he will put up points, he will score goals um, he will do his he will do his thing um, and I'm sure he will be well liked and, and he'll be well loved up there um, but with regards to the leader comment, I'd be I'd be concerned about that. Okay, so we're getting down to down to the nitty gritty now. So we've got quite a meaty one here. Uh, so mm. buckle up, boys and girls. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, this has come from Colin Basford, and he says, uh, and, and I suspect this may be related to a few comments I've seen flying around following the um, the latest Jersey launch. Uh, it says, uh, Colin asks, are we still the Nottingham Panthers and do people care about that identity? John O. Yes, I very much care about that identity. We we are the Nottingham Panthers and we have been since it was formed in 1946. Um, I, I'm sure this does relate to the jersey launch where there is no mention of Nottingham or Panthers on, on the jersey, which is... Strange uh, and, and a little disappointing. I think I don't. I don't want to have a downer after such a phenomenal week. But I would have liked to have seen Nottingham and Panthers on the jersey because it's who we are. Um, it takes me back actually, and, and Adam will remember this when we went to Clone to watch some hockey a few years ago, mm. uh, and I was wearing my Panthers shirt. And we was in a sports bar after the game, and I'd just been to the toilet. I came out, and what, um, this a clone fan came to me and said, "Who are the gums?" Because it just said <laughs> GMB across, and they, and 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 that's the thing. And the thing is, you you can't criticise the the GMB. They they've given this club fantastic support for many 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 years, but I do think that that is prioritised over over our actual title which is the Nottingham Panthers uh, and I think that identity is very important and it should be there somewhere Right uh, Adam, you come in this one I've got a feeling you might have something to say about yeah. it as well. No, I, I totally agree with John O, you know, I remember that instant and remember uh, being horrified and finding it funny in equal measures um, and you know if if we don't have an identity then the club's got no soul 
And, you know, on a, a more flippant point, you know, hockey shirts are big things, aren't they? I'm sure you could find space on a hockey shirt for Nottingham Panthers and the GMB. You know, it, it's not like there, there are limitations on space. So, yeah, the, the identity of a club is absolutely crucial. If we don't have the identity, then why do people come and watch it? You know, I just find it strange that over the years there's, there's almost been this, you know, airbrushing of, of Nottingham and Panthers out of out of the equation. And, and it's disappointing, really, because, you know, the Nottingham Panthers are the team that we all go and, you know, loyally follow um, every Saturday night. And, you know, to not actually see that represented on, on the jersey that the players that, you know, most of us hero worship, um, it, it's strange. You know, I just... I'm baffled and I, I'd be really interested to see. I, I've not spotted, you know, all the team's jerseys in the uh, the Elite League yet, but how many of those jerseys don't actually carry the name of, of the club, of the players that they're representing on? I mean, are we alone? Um, I suppose only time will tell, really, but I don't know if every club's launched their jersey. I suspect so. Um, but I just, I, I see, no, see no need to not have the name of, of the club um, and the, the 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 name of the town or the city um, of of where that club's from on the jersey. It to me just seemed. Well, what, why are we hiding it? You know, are we ashamed of the name Nottingham? Are we ashamed of the Nottingham Panthers? We shouldn't be. You know, now more than ever, we should be proud to say who we are because of what we've done in the last few weeks. And you know, going back to last season, winning the Continental Cup. So, um, you know, to me, it's it's a backward step not having the names on the jersey. And any thoughts on that? Um, I'd be more concerned if the name Nottingham started disappearing from everything. Um, okay, yeah, it's not on the jerseys, which is disappointing, and I've always found it disappointing. Um, but you look on the website, it's the GMB Panthers official site of the Nottingham Panthers. The Nottingham Panthers Ice Hockey Club, uh, the Nottingham Panthers Twitter feed is trying to coin the phrase well, hashtag welcome to Nottingham this year. You know, all the, the CHL is all about welcome to Nottingham so if that starts to fade away then yes uh, then I would still be worried I'd like to see more of Nottingham I think um, especially if you think the the city is bidding to be the capital of culture in the future uh, the Panthers that's free advertising for the Panthers you include the Nottingham you think of the history that this city has got I'm, I'm, a, I'm a I love this city I'm, I'm Nottingham born Nottingham bred um, I, I'm well, I'm big into Robin Hood, things like that. I love, I love what our city has to offer. Um, so I'd love it to be represented in the jersey that I go, I wear every Saturday or Sunday or midweek um, when when there's games on. Um, but I'm not going to go the full fledged uh, panic mode until they start removing the word Nottingham altogether on everything. Okay, so. Uh, last couple of questions and uh, we're going to start with something that was very much a hot topic last season. Um, I think we are now <laughs> in the midst, don't say it too loudly because they might hear that we've, that we've noticed, uh, but I think we're in the midst of uh, using goal line technology this season. So um, he's already been in touch once uh, on the uh, on Twitter this evening, uh, but Chris, did, Chris Lavelle did send us a question in prior to the podcast as well. So uh, thank you for your contributions, Chris. Uh, always good to know at, uh, that we're having a, that, that you, you, you know, you enjoy getting your questions in and we enjoy answering them. So uh it's, quite, it's a good one as well. So, given that the league are now using goal line technology, should they have brought out rules in relation to what can be reviewed? Is it just for if the puck has crossed the line, for example, or will it include goalie interference? Also, um, and in brackets, too early for our league, in my opinion, uh, should we introduce coaches' challenge as the NHL have? So, we'll, sort of, we'll break that up. We'll, we'll deal with the goal line technology uh, first uh, and then just have a, a sort of quick uh, straw poll, as it were, for the, uh, for the coaches' challenge. So, uh, Andy, goal line technology, rules. Um, yeah, there, there probably should be. Um, mm-hmm. But there definitely won't be. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's be honest. I think I think we'll be left to sort of work it out ourselves. But I, I, with that with that in mind, it should be relatively self-explanatory. Um, 
you know, if a team thinks they've scored, um, it should be looked at, basically. If a ref isn't sure as to whether it's been scored, it should be looked at. Um, I think, uh, realistically, that that is, is sort of, is what it's there for, but there should be sort of rulings as to whether, um, you know, whether they look at things like they have in the NHL regarding like the referee's intent to blow the whistle rather than when the whistle is blown. Mm. Um, you know, is there scope for, you know, it should only be looked at for pucks crossing the line or is it also going to be look, looking at high sticks, uh, you know, um, goal scored from a high stick? Are they going to be looking at things being kicked in? You know, what what is it actually going to be used for? Um, and it probably it probably should be um, made readily available, but I I would imagine that it will sort of be um, you know uh, let's let's see what happens as it goes along, uh, as is most of the uh, you know changes in, in the league. Jono, I, I think it should be for for everything in and around the goal crease, so goal line, goalie interference, high sticks, like Andy said, anything in and around the goal crease should be reviewed I think it's only going to be goal line if a puck crosses the line so the interesting thing with that as well is is that it, it should in theory with regarding anything in the goal crease it should also be looking at things like um, defensemen putting their hand on the puck in the crease mm-hmm. which is a, an yeah. automatic goal uh, pe- or penalty, penalty shot, shot. Or, Pe- a penalty um, shot and I think it's an automatic goal in the last two minutes or if it's an yeah it, you know, and, and things like that. But I, I get the impression that we are we we will literally just be using it to see if a puck has crossed the line. Yeah, um, I, I think it should be used for a lot more than that. I think it should be used for everything in that area, and, uh, for a player in the crease even. And it, and you should be easily be able to tell if a player was in the crease or pushed into the crease. I, I, I'm still going on about it, but I still think Cardiff were absolutely robbed. On uh, of a regulation win on on Sunday night because no way. Well, he was in the crease, but he was pushed in there by the defenceman. So, <laughs> well, and uh, and that's CHL where they do have a full review system. So, nothing, nothing is full foolproof. But uh, I would like to see the goal line technology cameras be used for everything in and around the goal net. Yeah, um, I, I, in, a, in an ideal world, I would probably say yes. But I think we've been waiting so long for goal line technology to get in I think we should probably let the referees and the officials find their feet on it first before we jump in with both feet <laughs> I think I know that's, that's an awful lot of cliches in one sentence and I really didn't think about that sentence before it came out of my mouth that's ridiculous so but but yes I mean let, let's let's just celebrate the fact that we actually have the promised goal line technology what is it two three seasons after it we we were told it was coming so yeah you know hurrah let's let's appreciate what we've got and and hope it's uh, is, it's going to get better um softly, we will softly catchy monkey <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yes sorry yeah the second yes the second part of the question um the the, the coach's challenge now uh, anybody who, who doesn't know what the coach's challenge is um that the nhl are running um if a goal is scored and the uh, the team who it has been scored on believe that there was goalie interference or that the the play that resulted immediately prior to the goal uh going into the defensive zone was offside they can challenge the goal and um with the nhl's many 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 cameras and uh, you know officials the toronto war room uh, and such they they can sort of go ahead and have a look at all of that and um you can only use the coach's challenge if you have your timeout uh, available if you haven't used your timeout yet and if you are wrong uh, you lose your timeout uh, you you retain your timeout if uh, if your your challenge is successful so um given that we've only just got goal line technology in let's let's sort of change the the, the question around a little bit how feasible do we think the coach's challenge is uh, for the elite league uh, adam um well i agree with it uh, you know, I, I think its introduction in the NHL has been really good, and I think that the feedback's generally been good from the players and coaches. 
Um, and yeah, I'd like to see it implemented in the Elite League. I really would. Um, I suspect some of it will come down to, you know, being able to you know wind back uh, what you see on a TV monitor, you know, to challenge certain things. And you know, how good is that camera work? Will the camera work pick up everything that? Um, you know, is being challenged by a particular coach or players on the team. Um, so I think, you know, as ever, it probably comes down to the limitations of technology available in particular rinks. But, you know, if we could make it happen and, you know, if the officials had access to monitors that, you know, were, were showing the game and you could roll back and rewind and then look at things in slow-mo and, and, you know, freeze frames and things like that, that'd be great. That really would be good. And, you know, I would massively you know welcome the introduction of that to the elite league uh just before i went to adam somebody i think somebody wanted to speak up so uh, own up and uh, say your piece yeah i was just gonna say um <laughs> it's probably a bad thing to have at the minute because can you imagine how long games involving sheffield will last <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, Bullard, controversial two podcasts running <laughs> I don't anybody care. else want to anybody else want to come in on that? Um, in, in, re, less less Sheffield bashing and more to do with the actual question, if uh, if that's all right. <laughs> yeah, it'd be something that I'd like to see in the future, but um, that involves money. Um, there's not a lot hmm. of it going around in the elite league at the moment, so uh, let's just be thankful we finally got goal line technology in. Um, I'd rather go for a fourth official um, as the next step, personally, before introducing coaches challenge, etc. And uh, that that sort of brings us nicely on to uh, the final question of the evening, Ant. In terms of what you were saying about uh, the, the the money that uh, probably does does not exist to implement such a technology, um, this is on a related point, and it comes from Anthony Russell. Hello, fellow podcaster uh, from the Banners on the Wall podcast, and he says, "How in the hell does my podcast on second tier British ice hockey have a title sponsor, but the EIHL doesn't?" It's a free-for-all. Go for it, boys. Who's coming in on this one? <laughs> Where do you want to start? Well, I, I, can, I, can, I can imagine sponsoring banners on the wall is probably a damn sight cheaper than sponsoring the Elite League, but it, it makes a very, very good point. Why isn't the top league in the most watched indoor sport in the UK not have a title sponsor? And I think we could probably have a whole other podcast discussing the, the whys and wherefores for that. But I, I just think, uh, if you remember, a couple of seasons ago, I think the Elite League were advertising for, for a marketing executive or someone who would do that sort of thing. That position still hasn't been filled. And I think they was offering something in the region of 60 grand a year as well. And it's not been filled... So there's nobody out there. I think it's it's a speculate to accumulate sort of position. You need to pay the money to get someone of the caliber to go out and get them deals. So if you pay, so if you say you're going to pay someone a hundred thousand a year, for example, to get the caliber of person who would do that, they would probably pay for themselves five tenfold if they went out and got the deals and got a really good sponsor for the league. We know that this, we know that we lo- we love the sport. It could be run a damn sight better. We all know that, but it's a great sport to watch. The crowds are growing. There's a great buzz about it at the minute. We've just had two new, new teams come into the league. There should be a title sponsor of the Elite League, and why isn't they? I don't know, but I think a lot of it has to do with not having someone specialist at the helm in the Elite League to go out and get that sort of deal. Anybody else want to come in on that one? Wow, um, I, I agree with Jono. T- I agree with Jono there, and and I think that if the elite league wanted it as badly as they they ought to do, then they should go out and make it happen. And you know, if nobody responded to the advert to say the salary was sixty thousand pound for a, a marketing executive, then up the salary. You know, put it to seventy, put it to eighty, put it to an amount that you're going to get interest in that role and then you know once you've gone through the interviewing process and appointed them you know hopefully you'll see the fruits of that decision and as John O said you know they will make themselves worthwhile you know 5, 10, 15 times over it just to me feels like the league are resting on its laurels and there's you know there's a lack of 
sort of urgency about going out there to get a title sponsor for the league name. Um, and, and I'm thinking to myself, well, crikey, you know, British ice hockey, the leagues were sponsored by Heineken for, for many, many years, you know, through the 80s. And, you know, to have someone like a Heineken sponsor in ice hockey now, that would be a ginormous deal. So there are people out there that are, you know, very adept at going out and speaking with, with big multinational companies. And it's just a shame that the Elite League hasn't got anybody in post that's able to go out there and do that and, you know, catch a big fish for us. Uh, I would say I, I could make a, a, a veiled reference to certain teams in the league, obviously not having problems finding sponsors based on the state of ice pads and stuff, but uh, no, we'll leave that there. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I think um, that Jono hit it nail, nail on the head that the, uh, the, the position that the elite league have had open now for three, four years um, surely it's time to take a gamble. I mean, the, the reasons we've been given as to why the position's not been filled is that they've not had any suitable candidates. But surely a slightly unsuitable candidate is better than no candidate at all. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, it's, I'm not in that sort of area of business, so I wouldn't have a, a clue about trying to sell a product to somebody, ba- especially based on um, our efforts on Saturday night. I'm going to I'm gonna come in and, and, and answer the, the the question as put rather than looking into sort of the whys and wherefores and, and what should and shouldn't be. Um, the reason why Banners of the Wall have a title sponsor and immediately doesn't is because quite clearly someone at Banners of the Wall has a scooby-doo of what they're supposed to be doing. Basically. Uh, you know, I, I agree that this, this league should have... Uh, some some form of, of major sponsorship deal. Um, it was um, odd. Is odd the right word? I'm not sure if odd's the right word, but I always felt slightly underwhelmed when the title sponsor was was Rapid Solicitors because it was it was <laughs> you know it it's not what we should be aspiring for. But then, having said that, at least when we had Rapid Solicitors, we actually had something. Um, you know, it's it's crazy, but there isn't any in every every sport in in the world has sponsorship deals for their leagues, and I, I just find it absolutely crazy that that we we either can't get one or we or we just don't have one. And I think I think it is down to the people involved. I think it's too much of a boys' club. I think it's too much of a closed shop. I think it's too much of a cushy lifestyle for the people involved. Um, and, I, and I think that ultimately that's the reason, because they're happy with where they are. Um, but realistically, from a, you know, from a viewing point of view and from a, from a fan's mm-hmm. point of view, you know, I, I really do think that there, there should be you know, something... You know, rel- I'm not saying that you know, we should be sponsored by... Like, you know, some of the biggest companies in the world, you know, it shouldn't be like the, the Google Elite League or whatever, but <laughs> surely someone somewhere must have some sort of, you know, if they were offered and said, you know, we would like you to sponsor our, our league, surely someone somewhere would, would sit up and think, actually, you know, there's a, there's a good there's a good following, it's, it's pretty decent uh, following here. Um, yeah, let's let's go for it, why not? I just find it amazing that we that we haven't. Just to throw a curveball onto that, how much do you think a? I'm asking my own question now. How much do you think um, not having a TV deal would affect potential sponsorships coming in? Massively. I, I, yeah, yeah, hugely. I think, I think you probably already knew the answer to that question as soon as you started asking it. To be honest, Ant. But uh, yeah, it's I, it's I all about that, profile. Yeah. It's all about exposure. Definitely. You know, no big company, you know, and I appreciate what Andy was saying, you're not going to get a Google or a Microsoft interested, but, you know, no half decent company that, you know, might be willing to chuck, I don't know, 300, 400,000 quid at the league to say, we'll be your title sponsor. What do we get back for it? You know, surely we'll get, um, you know, mentions on your live coverage of games or a weekly roundup show. And then, you know, we politely explain back to them, actually there is no show and we don't cover any games live you know most companies are just going to walk away there and end the interest at that moment so 
yeah, it, it's about sort of corporate profile, and we just can't offer that to anybody that that's interested in throwing some money at being the title sponsor of the Elite League. So really poor, I think, really poor. But one one thing to to also consider that, that has kind of mixed things up a little bit this year. There was a lot of focus on the the free to air TV deal. Um, that you know was I mean that that was a, a laugh a minute really. Um, front runner doing the the highlights show um didn't didn't really take off and you know premier sports who originally came in with a renewal for the elite league which wasn't taken up for whatever reason have now introduced their own free to air tv channel so you know have the elite league just uh, missed a massive trick there um, I, th- I think that's probably a rhetorical question, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah, the answer is a big fact. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes they have. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I, I would imagine, um, yeah, in, in, you know, to sort of summarise and uh, an answer, answer Anthony's original question, um, there's there's a lot of factors to it, but um, n- British ice hockey remains the best kept secret, which is uh, seems to be the league's favourite tagline. And um, mm. while ever we, we are doing ourselves out of exposure, um, like what we could have had uh, on Premier Sports with, uh, you know, uh, wh- whatever live games they would have negotiated last year, whatever live games they, they may have negotiated this year, along with games that would probably have ended up on the free-to-air channel. Um, th- that's that's an opportunity that has, has kind of fallen by the wayside and mm. sponsors... Of, of any substance are going to look at that and yeah. take the money elsewhere. Probably. I've got a very quick story relating to that. When I worked at Boots uh, and they were sold to a, uh, a multinational corporation and uh, the outgoing chief executive said to the incoming chief executive, you know, oh, well, you've got this very special brand. And the incoming chief executive said, yes, it's time to take it out the safe. It's time to stop protecting it. It needs to get out there. And now the Boots brand is known all around the world uh, because since then they promote it all around the world. It's available in America, in markets in Australia, in in the Far East. Uh, And it's just taken off. And that's it. Sometimes you've got to take a risk. Sometimes you've got to get it out there. Get it out there. And, you know, good things can happen. Good things could happen. Um, we we are powerless to do anything about it, so uh, we 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 will just continue to talk about it until uh, until something happens, I suppose. So um, I think we'll probably leave it there. Uh, I think we we have talked quite enough tonight. Uh, thank you very 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 much to everybody who has sent uh, their questions in. Uh, we've had an absolute ball uh, for our first uh, Ask TCW of this season. Uh, we will be back uh, next week fingers crossed um, this time next week we will also have a special guest on Ask TCW in the form of Aaron Murphy uh, he was supposed to be with us tonight but um, he has uh, been called away to go and commentate on a KHL game so uh, he's had to postpone so uh, fingers crossed uh, I mean you know so it's it's, it's good for Aaron if he's getting, you know, get, getting the uh, the games to commentate on. But uh, we would we, we've been trying to pin him down for a, another STCW for a little while. So uh, fingers crossed. Uh, we'll also be back on Monday uh, for a, a review podcast. Hopefully, uh, we'll still be feeling all the warm and fuzzies uh, as as we did do this Monday. Uh, no guarantees, but yes, it's uh, it's all business. We are kicking off our domestic season and our Challenge Cup campaign this weekend. So uh, I imagine we will have an awful lot to talk about. Um, so I think all that remains for me to say is thank you very much to Adam Reddish. Thanks, everybody. Andy Haywood. Anytime. Antoine Marijan. Not a problem. Have a good weekend, everybody. And John A. Bullard. Thank you very much, and thanks for listening. Cheers, everybody. Ta-da.